Nick, Nick, listen to me. I want you to know that all these savages are going to be massacred. The cavalry's riding right now from Gatesville. <laughs> And they're gonna butcher every last one of these godless beings. <laughs> Fuck, dude. guys welcome back to days of darkness and welcome to my review of bone tomahawk this one came out in 2015 starring kurt russell richard jenkins matthew fox and patrick wilson and was written and directed by s craig zahler first of all because i know i'm going to get questions about it i am in a new area i am not at my house right now i am currently at my girlfriend's place i'm just here for the day and we're having a lazy day and i'm like you know what I want to fucking crank out a review for my people. So here we are. <laughs> uh, great acoustics in here too. But anyways, we got to talk about motherfucking Bone Tomahawk. <sighs> Anytime someone asks me, oh, what's a movie that you think flies under people's radar? Or what's a movie do you feel is not talk spoken about enough? Every single time, for the most part, I say Bone Tomahawk. With viewer discretion advised, of course, because one thing that this film is known for, for from people who have seen it is the fucking brutality, dude. This movie, when it wants to go there, it fucking goes there. Obviously, um, there is that one scene in the movie that everybody talks about, and don't you worry we'll get there but i also don't want to make that the entire review because what we have here is yes a very bloody very brutal very deliciously gory movie but we what we also have here is a fucking excellent period piece dude this movie sorry about the lighting there this movie is so damn good at being a period piece man you feel like you are in the wild the dying days of the wild west man it's it's incredible the dialogue is i don't even know how to really describe it the only way i can, the only thing i can really say and i hate comparing filmmakers i don't think it's good but this is i'm trying to illustrate how fucking great zoller is at writing it is the only time that I have legitimately been like, this feels like Tarantino-esque writing. Not nearly as sarcastic, but just with the consistency and quality. There are moments in this movie, long scenes, like I'm talking six to seven minute scenes, where it's just two people talking. And you're fucking hooked, dude. You like, you, they have me every single time. I can't look away. I don't want to look at my phone. I don't want to do anything but watch these two old men talk over soup. <laughs> like, and that is partially credited to Zeller for his amazing writing and the fact that when they made this film, they did not leave a word off of that draft. They did not, our script, I should say. They did not leave a word out of that script. That is a big credit to Zeller. It is also a big credit to Kurt Russell, to Richard Jenkins, to Matthew Fox, to Patrick Wilson, and everybody else in this movie. It could be the best dialogue in the world, but if you have bad actors reading your dialogue, it's not gonna work. These guys are fucking incredible, and they carry just the presence of all four of those gentlemen they carry this movie, dude. There are, like I said, long scenes with nothing but talking. 
And it is in those scenes where you get invested in the characters and people will say, oh, it's boring. Oh, it's slow. Oh, it takes forever to get to the fights and all that shit, which all of that shit is lovely. And when it gets there, it gets there and it's great. And it is so, so worth the wait. If this would have been some action packed Indiana Jones style thrill ride, I don't think it would have worked nearly as well. <clears throat> And in those moments where they're dealing with certain things and certain obstacles, which we will get into in the spoiler section, you feel every piece of that. And it is just as investing as when they are in trouble and in an actual real, holy shit, we're going to die danger. To me, I don't know what else I can say without going into fucking spoilers about this, man. This movie needs to be witnessed. Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into the spoiler section now. And let's just spoil the shit out of this motherfucker. Alright, spoiler time. Your ass has been warned. First of all, boom. First take. First, first frame. Throat slit. What the fuck? <laughs> like, immediately, uh, we get... David Arquette, former WCW World Heavyweight Champion, and yes, every time I mention him on this channel, I will be saying that because holy shit, that is a thing that happened, and you can't take it away from him. But, <laughs> so you get David Arquette and the legend himself, uh, Mr. Sid Haig, rest in peace, buddy, we miss you, we love you, uh, what a fucking fantastic actor. And the best way to keep his memory alive is to talk about all the kick-ass roles he has been in. And don't you worry, we will be talking about pretty much every one of them at some point. But for now, we got to talk about this opening of Bone Tomahawk, man. Uh, they're basically robbers, they're criminals. And they're running around, perusing the land, trying to um, steal shit. That's it. <laughs> they're stealing shit and they're killing people. And they stumble upon a, what seems to be just a traditional uh, Native American burial ground. And uh, our cat starts getting nervous and he's like, oh, I don't know if we should be here, buddy. Uh, and then Buddy just goes and said, hey, uh, is like, this is no time for womanly imaginings. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, God, just... And that's another thing about this movie that I didn't mention in the spoiler free section. There are moments of this film that I would say are pretty fucking funny. Like, like whether it be Richard Jenkins' character or these two here, um, there are moments in this that are like, it's semi-dry humor, but it's funny. <laughs> like, there are moments where I actually laugh, which on the surface, you would think a movie like this would not have that, but there are little cool moments like that in this film. Uh, but yeah, man, so they start going a little bit further and further and further into this place. And Sid Haig just, boom, arrow right to the neck. And Arquette gets freaked out, trips over some rocks. Boom, title card, Bone Tomahawk. You're like... From that brief, I'd say it's like five-ish minute opening, I'm hooked. I'm fucking hooked immediately. Uh, we haven't even been introduced to any of the main characters yet, and already I'm like, holy shit. So Arquette buries uh, his old belongings, I'm pretty sure is what it was meant to be. And he, he just runs into town, man, and he stops off at a bar, and we get introduced to Sheriff Hunt and his uh, right-hand man, Chicory. Uh, Kurt Russell and Richard Jenkins and god dude Kurt Russell man I think about who my favorite actor is of all time and I don't really have one but Kurt Russell every time I think about it Kurt Russell is constantly in that conversation because oh my god he is fantastic in this movie uh, and Richard Jenkins as well gives an incredible performance but they're basically interrogating this guy um, and this fucker, who then refers to himself by his dead friend's name, Buddy. Uh, his name's not Buddy. I can't really remember what his actual name is in the movie. But yeah, man. So he ends up, uh, leading these troglodytes to the town. 
and uh, we get inter before that happens, we get introduced to Mr. and Mrs. O'Dwyer, played by uh, Mr. O'Dwyer being played by Patrick Wilson, and his legs broken. He was working on the roof during a storm, trying to be a manly man, and fucking fucked up his leg and broke it. <laughs> and it was cool to be able to see that old school Western way of like casting a bone, broken <clears throat> broken bone, where you just have two wood boards probably about that thin just on either side of the leg or arm or whatever is broken in this case and it's just wrapped <laughs> like wrapped by three separate bands and that's how they healed shit back then and that's pretty fucking accurate so it's like oh my god this like i said dude this movie does such a good job at being a period piece he's not in some big ass cast he is very much so in in danger here like breaking a leg back then man you were in fucking trouble like if that shit got infected <clears throat> you're you're losing it and then we get the highfalutin gentleman john uh bruder played by matthew fox what a fucking great character he's such just like a rich asshole like he is that not typical but he at first just evokes that typical like rich southerner uh type personality and and he's not a great guy either he is very much an asshole and while you do learn a little bit about why he is the way he is um it's still not to me he's still a dick like i know they try and give him a more sympathetic role and that's one thing i credit as Craig Zeller for doing is a lot of these characters in this movie are morally gray. Yes, you know, there are clear villains and clear heroes of this film, without a doubt. But someone like Bruder, who brags about, you know, killing Native Americans, that's a dick. That's a fucking horrible guy. Uh, you know, we get a little bit of why, like why he harbors this resentment about his family getting killed by Native Americans and stuff like that. But, you know, it still doesn't justify that way of thinking but as a credit to s craig zoller that's the way people thought back then it's not great it's not fantastic at all uh, it's a horrible time in a in human history but that's the way people spoke about native americans at least you know white people <laughs> uh not right in the head white people i should say but uh but yeah man we even get a scene about a town meeting and the professor who is native american explicitly says like these people are not like me uh but and then he looks at uh i believe it's patrick wilson um and he looks at him and he goes somehow i feel though oh wait, what does he say he goes men like you wouldn't even be able to distinguish be able to distinguish the difference between them and me and you're like holy shit like that's that's intense man and you know while these are the heroes of this movie you know some of them do have that i don't even want to call it a character flaw because it goes beyond that but some of them do harbor some sort of resentment towards people who don't look like them and that's accurate you know uh, i can't stand when period pieces do the thing where like they just act like stuff like that didn't exist to me it's not great but it's something that needs to be addressed and it and they do and it's very brief it doesn't take up the movie it's not some big social commentary but it's not ignored either which is good anyways so yeah uh matthew fox does an incredible job as this character uh and before that town meeting that I mentioned, that uh, the idiot who, in the beginning of the movie, played by David Arquette, actually, like I said, runs into the bar, and he leads the troglodytes to the town, and they end up kidnapping uh, Deputy Nick. Well, at one point, sorry, I'm skipping ahead. He, uh, he gets shot in the leg by the sheriff, and they then decide to treat him for his wounds, and he... Um, <clears throat> He, uh, Mrs. O'Dwyer, who is treating him, all, th all three of them, Arquette, I'm just gonna keep calling him David Arquette, it's fucking David Arquette, come on, David Arquette, Mrs. O'Dwyer, 
and Deputy Nick all get kidnapped by these troglodytes. And before that, they actually killed a, uh, a farm boy who was just tending to the horses. And they fucking just sneak around and he hears something and they fucking brutalize this poor dude, man. It's, it's rough. And already, like I said, the violence in this movie, it is quick. It is sudden. But it's, it just comes out of nowhere. It's fucking insane. And that's one of those scenes, man. They just, boom, just, they kill the shit out of this dude. And then they just leave. They kidnap the three of them. And then uh, Sheriff Hunt, uh, Arthur O'Dwyer, um, Chicory, and John Bruder uh, all agree to basically go rescue Mrs. O'Dwyer and Nick. And they really don't give a shit about Buddy <laughs> because he's a fucking dickhead. But yeah, man, they're going to go and they're going to rescue these guys. And they each have their own reasons. Like I said, Bruder uh, is not a big fan of Native Americans. And he is under the impression that uh, these are just Native Americans. And as I've already stated, uh, the professor, uh, his name is Tall Trees, by the way, explicitly tells him, he's like, these are not people. Like, you guys don't stand a chance. <laughs> and he just warns him, man. He's like, dude, this is not like me. Like, you've never faced anything like this before. And Bruder's a cocky fucking idiot. So he's like, oh, we'll be fine. And, uh, <laughs> but yeah, and Chicory obviously wants to help the sheriff. He's his right-hand man. He'll do whatever. Uh, love that character, too. He references his wife a lot in the movie, who is unfortunately passed away. Uh, prior to the events of this film and uh, that leads to a pretty sad sad bit of dialogue which we'll get into here in a bit uh, towards the end of the movie but and then obviously Sheriff Hunt is doing his job and Arthur O'Dwyer wants to save his wife so all four of these men have motivations some more admirable than others but they all have their motivations of wanting to go on this trip and that's a lot of the movie, dude. A lot of this movie is set uh, during this trip, man. And a lot of the situations they are in have nothing to do with the troglodytes. The troglodytes are at the end. They're at the end, but throughout the entire, pretty much the entire runtime of this movie, they are battling the elements. They are battling the fact that Arthur O'Dwyer has a broken leg. And there are moments where he's like, hey, just you know, go on without me. I'll catch up while you guys are sleeping. Uh, there's just little shit like that, man. And by the end of this movie, uh, there's a scene, there's a lot of great stuff, by the way. There's a lot of great stuff with the morality of John Bruder. And they, all three of them, at certain points, confront him on that and confront him of, why are you such a fucking asshole? And that's when he kind of divulges why he harbors that resentment. Uh, again, not justifiable, but you at least learn more about that character. Um, and yeah, man, we get some, uh, <laughs> we get some intense shit, dude. And John Bruder, you know, say what you will about him. He is a bad motherfucker, dude. He, uh, he sets up like bells around their campsite. So when they're sleeping, if they hear something like a ringing, dude, he's on it, man. They hear a ringing and it's like an animal. I think it's like a fox or something. And he just, just immediately just sits up, boom, gone. Like, he is a sharpshooting motherfucker, without a doubt. And there is a scene where these got these two, uh, these two uh, Mexican gentlemen come up to them. They talk to them for a second, and they're like, we're not robbers, we're not, you know, which, that's a ploy, obviously, but they're like, we're not robbers, we're not, you know, gonna kill you or anything, we just want... You know, I think they're asking for like directions or something like that. And Bruder's just like, fuck this. And he just, he just shoots them. He just shoots both of them point blank. And, you know, Sheriff's Hunt, like, you motherfucker. Like, why? And he, <laughs> he's like, there's, he's like, it's too big of a risk, which that's smart. But it's like, oh, God, you could have at least given them a little second to explain themselves or something. And he's a, he's good enough of a sharp shot where fuck man, if they're about to pull some dirty shit, uh, you know you would think 
you would think at least you'd give him a second, but no, a brooder just fucking kills him, man. And um, they find out that they're uh, religious men, or they're posing as religious men, because later on, uh, there is a group of people that do indeed attack and attempt to to kill Bruder. They stab him in the shoulder, and he shoots him dead, and they make off with their horses, so then it's just them having to walk, and Bruder's horse ends up dying, which I think, or he, ha Bruder has to put his own horse out of his misery, misery, <laughs> misery, because they, uh, they just crippled that poor thing, man, and that horse was done and he's like it kind of humanizes that character and it gar garners him a little sympathy and that's why i say brooder's more of a morally gray guy it's like he has a heart but it's just not always in the right place which makes him one of my favorite characters just because of that sheer like like how do you feel about this guy i still don't know how to feel about him really but i know he's a really really well written character as all these guys are and um <laughs> so yeah man there comes a point where um o'dwyer's legs is done like he is he's fucked he is not gonna make it out of this he's done um so what it, unfortunately what they have to do at for at first they're like hey we need to cut this fucking leg off <laughs> and he's like fuck you you're not cutting my leg off <laughs> and so he's like they uh, operate on it uh i believe yeah trickery has a little uh, operation experience from the war. So you don't see a lot of it, thankfully. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, man, they operate on his leg. They dope him up so he's asleep the entire time. The problem is they go to face off with the troglodytes while O'Dwyer is still sleeping. And so when they reach them, it's three instead of four. Uh, you know, a crippled man is still another man. <laughs> so... They end up getting there, and right off the bat, these dudes are immediately at a disadvantage before they even encounter a troglodyte. They are tired. They are weak. Sleep-deprived, all of it. They are, like, at a clear disadvantage. And then when they first interact with the troglodytes, they immediately lose a man. Like, right off the fucking bat, they lose Bruder. Uh, an arrow flies right into... Uh, Sheriff's Hunt, Sheriff Hunt's le uh, leg, leg, <laughs> leg, his, <laughs> his arm, uh, fucking chicory gets fucked up, Bruder gets it the worst though, man, he gets tackled down, and they fucking throw something to where his whole hand just, just gone, and he's like up against this tree, and to his credit, he knows when he's down, and he's like, dude, I'm not, I'm I'm done, man. I'm fucked. And he goes, please hand me the, uh, please hand me the weapon. And I think he, he gets like a, oh, what do they call him? Repeater. Uh, it's like a rifle, basically. But he's like, please hand me the repeater. And he's like, he's bleeding to death. And he's like, I'm, I'm going to take out as many as I can, but I'm, I'm not living through this and i'm way too vain as he says i'm way too vain to live as a cripple <laughs> so yeah this is gonna be it for me sorry about that lighting guys computer keeps <laughs> anyways um but yeah man he's he's fucked and so we get that scene of him just waiting for a troglodyte to come out and as soon as one does they just throw that fucking bone tomahawk and you don't see what happens to him but you see later it just right in his fucking head dude it's like oh god so then it's just it's down to the two old men it's down to sheriff hunt and it's down to chicory and they they end up going uh to face off with them and they're still kind of and they they immediately get fucked up like there's no <laughs> there's no avoiding it they immediately uh get ambushed by these troglodytes because they know the environment and the two uh people the two um sheriff hunt and chicory have no idea where they are so they get ambushed pretty easily and we get a fucking gruesome scene of uh the head the head mountain man just trying to put this bone this huge fucking animal skull bone thing into sheriff hunt's mouth and he's like getting it in there he's like fuck and then they knock him out 
and they drag him uh, to the cave. And uh, then we get the reveal of <laughs> uh, Mrs. O'Dwyer and Nick who are in their own cell. They reveal that um, uh, Nick, Nick is out. Nick is completely knocked out. He's not doing too hot because uh, he got fucked up by the troglodytes. And <laughs> Mrs. O'Dwyer is like pristine. Like she's great. I guess they just didn't fuck her up for whatever reason. I don't know if it's like a thing for them. No clue. But anyways, so they divulge that Buddy uh, was killed by the troglodytes, killed and eaten. I imagine eaten because they're cannibals. So then right after that, man, we get uh, we get the scene. We get the scene. They drag Nick out of his cell. Um, we'll get to that later on. They kill Nick. <laughs> That's all I will say for right now. They kill Nick. And uh, then we get... <laughs> fucking uh we get O'Dwyer Mr. O'Dwyer waking up in the desert and he basically makes his way to uh Sheriff Hunt left a trail for him so he's able to literally limp to the cave and he takes out a couple troglodytes man he's shooting these motherfuckers six sides of heaven dude he's like just blowing these fuckers away left and right and um then he eventually discovers that they have this communication device that is like surgically implanted into each one of their necks and it basically lets allows them to whistle because they don't talk they just just out of their fucking throats like why wouldn't you just you know be able to do that but yeah whatever man <laughs> uh the villains in this are absolutely fucking terrifying so i'm not worried about it but he ends up cutting that out of one of their necks and he's like luring them. He's like whistling and spitting out the blood. And each time one comes up, he just, just blows them away. And uh, he eventually makes his way, is able to make his way to the cave. And uh, it's right in the nick of time too. They, uh, <laughs> they're trying to break out. Eventually Sheriff Hunt get, gets compromised in the form of getting a flask stuck in his stomach. I guess open wound in his stomach. You're like, oh, God, fuck. Uh, but he's able to chop the head troglodyte's foot in half, and they they kill them, and Sheriff Hunt's basically fucked, and we'll get into the end of this movie here. He, uh, he fucking, dude, <laughs> he's like, you know, Chicory, I want you to escort Mr. and Mrs. O'Dwyer home, please. And as my last order, he goes say goodbye to my wife for me and i'll say hello to yours and then you're just like fuck dude they're just and maybe it's just me man but there's something about that scene dude that's like oh god fuck me it's just so sad but then he's like i'm gonna stay here please hand me the repeater and i'm gonna they they determine in like a lot of counting dialogue that i just glossed over uh they've come to the conclusion that there's three of them left and so when they leave uh off in the distance they hear from the cave just poof, poof, and then it waits for a second and then poof, and then that would lead you to the belief that he fucking got him man and they killed they were able to kill all of the monsters that were up there in that cave and uh chicory just gets a smile on his face and uh, it's pretty much obvious that after that, you know, Sheriff Hunt died. But uh, what a way to fucking go out, man. What a fucking badass character. Uh, Sheriff Hunt, dude. Kurt Russell, man. I just, I can't really gush about him enough. Uh, what a fucking fantastic performance. And what a fucking fantastic movie, guys. This one is 100% just... If you haven't seen it, and you watch the spoiler section and you watch me spoil the shit out of this shame on you damn it go see this <laughs> but anyway guys i can ramble no longer uh that'll be it for the review portion of the video but oh man <laughs> oh man 
we got to get into the blood, the guts, and the gory bits. We got to get into my kill of the film. Stick around. Before I go into this, this is going to be the easy, this has got to be the easiest kill of the film section I think I have ever done. It's cut and dry, it's pretty obvious, but I gotta give the other gore in this the, the light of day because we get a ton of it. Holy shit. <laughs> it's fucking great. Uh, first of all, just the opening throat slit, immediately having an opening where someone just, boom, gets their throat cut. You know, nothing wrong with a good old-fashioned throat cut. Uh, the stable boy's death in the movie, just him, like, looking around in the fucking, in the stable, and then all of a sudden a troglodyte just comes up, zip, right across the neck, and then another one gets an arrow, boom, right through the fucking eye, you just see it burst out of the back of his head. And it's, like I said, man quick and you're like whoa fuck <laughs> and then they eventually find him and they see that they gutted the shit out of him and just left him there um yeah man ugly shit there dude for sure uh you get <laughs> you get brooder's death again with just seeing his hand just get chopped the fuck off and it's not like cheesy it's not like he's like Duh! like he fucking is like immediately like immediately is going white like stone cold white he's losing a lot of blood and then just seeing that aftermath of that tomahawk just sticking out of his face you're like oh god uh great kill there uh sheriff's hunt sheriff hunt's death when they slice his stomach open and then take the flask that has been on this hot coal and they just stick it in there and you're like oh my god and uh, Sheriff Hunt reacts accordingly to that because, ow. <laughs> uh, the head troglodyte getting his foot cut in half, getting shot in the chest by O'Dwyer. And then uh, one of the, probably the most badass moment of this movie. Um, you just get Sheriff Hunt just standing up, flask hanging out of his fucking stomach. And he just has this tomahawk that's fashioned from bone and just starts hacking at this dude's fucking neck. Uh, gets about two shots in before his whole head just floop. Awesome. Nothing like a good beheading. Accurate, too. Uh, it's very hard to find something sharp enough to just straight go through somebody's head once. It's not the most accurate thing in the world. You can see it, like samurai swords and stuff like that, but just that sheer brutality of boom boom and then he's dangling a little bit and then poof, gone uh if this next kill wasn't in it that would probably be my kill of the film but uh it's not i will give a little bit of a listener's discretion advised here because what i am about to say i am going to detail this kill in all of its I am going to talk about this kill in full detail, and it ain't going to be pretty, because this is one of those things that sticks with me. Usually, when I'm talking about a kill of the film, I'm like, oh my god, it was so fucking awesome, dude. This was not fun to watch. Like, this hurt. It hurt. <laughs> and I'm not, like, the obvious thing of, like, the mutilation part of it that's not even what i'm talking about yeah that sucks but just the sounds and everything and the visual it's just <sighs> so anyways here we go with my kill of the film for bone tomahawk <clears throat> they drag nick out of the cage they proceed to strip him naked they pick him up he says his last words to sheriff hunt saying that um Buddy deserved to die. He was a bad man. You made the right call by shooting him. And gives him that last piece. Uh, and then they grab him by the hair. They take one of their knives, again, fashioned from human bone. And they just scalp this fucking poor guy. They scalp the shit out of him. They peel it back all the way to the back of his head. And it's not done there. Uh, they scalp him... Then they shove 
his own scalp into his mouth, take us take that same knife and just shove it in the back. And they just shove it through his head. And as he's, cause you're eventually gonna die from that, but they shove it in his mouth. Basically it goes through the roof of his mouth. Clearly didn't kill him though. Uh, but he's, by that point you're, you're done anyways. And they could have just left him to die, but no, cause they are basically prepping this dude for food. Uh, so they, two of the troglodytes grab him by the ankles. They lift him upside down and the head troglodyte proceeds to take his bone tomahawk facing the front and just starts hacking his dick and balls just starts and you see it you don't see his shit like fly apart or anything like that you see it from the ass point of view um but he's just hacking this poor fucker and it eventually gets to the point where and mind you during all of this sheriff hunt is screaming at this poor kid like you will be avenged don't you worry calvary's on the way we're gonna make sure these fuckers pay i'm so sorry yada yada and you're like it's not only is it brutal it's fucking sad because this dude's watching his deputy get fucking brutalized so he's hacking them through the stomach at this point and it gets to the point where they just rip and they just he doesn't completely come come in half like cartoon kung lao mortal Kombat 2 fatality shit he's they split him open to about here and they just rip and you're like fuck his guts just pour out of him and you're like oh my god god it hurts to watch every single time i've only seen this movie in its entirety twice and it is because of that scene without a doubt props to the special effects department by the way because holy shit <laughs> like oh uh, god i don't even want to talk about it anymore <laughs> okay so that's my kill of the film though guys uh thank you guys for watching i know this is probably going to be a very long review uh so thank you for sticking through it uh and yeah man thank you guys for the support uh next time on days of darkness we are going to start our next series review and we are going to start nightmare on elm street we're going to start with the original we'll be doing reviews in between each movie just to divvy it up a little bit uh, but yeah, man, next time on DOD, we're going to get into Nightmare on Elm Street. The original, I can't fucking wait. The horror masterpiece, in my opinion. Uh, and yeah, guys, thank you guys for watching so much. I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, take care of each other and keep watching horror. All right, guys, have a good day.